Ofsted Stadium. Now quick, we've got to rush because the Coens, John and I, are going to catch a plane. So let's quickly catch them and find out their best, best tips on parenting before they have to head out of Invercargill. Well, by praising the things that you actually want, behaviour that gets what you want will be repeated. And uh, so if you notice when your children are doing the right thing and praise it, then that helps increase that uh, level of behaviour. And if you isolate behaviour that you don't want, you say, no, we're not going to have that type of behaviour in this house. And you isolate it, you bring it to their attention, and you rehearse the behaviour that you want, uh, that needs attention. Sit down and do a practice with them. Yes, you can do. For instance, um, with thumb sucking, you can get your child to do a little exercise. They lift their thumb slowly to their mouth and then pull it away again five times. Or if they're not coming quickly, you can say, oh, we need to have a bit of a practice on this. Off to your bedroom, right? Back you come, off you go to your bedroom, back you come. Yeah, they're usually killing themselves laughing, oh, but yeah. so it's fun. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, another thing is normally we emotion, emotionally react, don't we? We fly off the handle at that wrong behaviour. Right, a parent needs to be able to get a big picture. They need to take a step back in their head. That doesn't mean they sort of walk backwards until they fall out the front door steps, but they, they need to say, what's going on here? How can I get, it, get this situation into one which is a better situation, one where they're learning things? And so they need to take that hot emotion and roll it into their pocket and perhaps engage a lilt in their voice, a little rise and fall in their voice, which shows uh, I'm still in control of the situation. You know, they might be faking it, but they're at least pretending that at least they've got emotional control while they're dealing with the situation. You're well known for putting celebration and fun in, into the family life. How does that happen? Oh, it can happen at all sorts of situations, especially when there's something to celebrate, like a birthday. Uh, yeah, but there's lots of times you can plan to have fun, apart from like the birthdays and Christmas. Like For us, we have a thing called a special plate, and when someone does something special, we bring out the special plate. And it's a fun thing that our kids are going to remember. We have other things like a hide-and-seek meal, where you hide a meal and the kids have to find it, which is terrible if they tip the plate up, because you put a clue on the bottom for where their dessert's going to be. And hide that too. So, what other it's things great, do we it's do? It's great fun finding those meals that they haven't found a couple of weeks later, sort of lurking in the back bottom of your closet. But if you don't plan these things, you've got to create memories for our kids to look back and say, oh, I remember when at Christmas we used to do this or this or this. Best memory you've created, do you think, for your family? Screaming well, in tunnels. Yes, every time we go through a tunnel they, or under a bridge, they scream. Just about terrified mm. the taxi driver we had the other week when they were going out to the airport. Um, another thing we've done is we've pulled all the mattresses off the beds and hauled them into the into the lounge and slept Marai style for the night. Crazy thing to do, but it's the type of thing that uh, they remember. When Naomi went away for a, a, a couple of nights just for some R and R, and I was looking after the kids, I got them all up in the middle of the night and told them we were having a midnight snack. And it was only 10 o'clock at night, and the little one was falling over with her sleep all the time, but. They thought that was great fun, being hauled out of bed to have a midnight so, snack. Yeah, I might go away more often now. Yeah. <laughs> Sibling rivalry is a real problem. They, they all want attention. It's hard to give it to anyone without the rest crowding in. There's a clearly identified cause for sibling rivalry, and it's a second child. OK, that's, it's, that's the clearly defined cause. But. Something we've done which helps reduce sibling rivalry is we have a thing called mummy dates and daddy dates, and that's where one child goes out with one parent each weekend for maybe only an hour you might do something really simple like walk along the beach and then the next weekend the next child goes out with the other parent and it's rotated around they all look forward to it it's a lot of fun it's one-to-one -one time where you can really chat and uh, it's a great idea yeah. mm. best fun you've had on your daddy day oh climbing around the volcanoes of Auckland and sliding down the slopes you know so it doesn't involve necessarily involve large amounts of money they'll always suggest going to the movies or to a takeaway restaurant but it might just be uh, horsing around at a beach or in a park or something like this. It doesn't have to involve lots yeah, of money. Yeah, we have low budget and high budget. Yeah. Looking forward to teenagers, which you no, haven't reached at this day. <laughs> <laughs> the teenager has to stamp their separateness from That's the family, right. their individuality. How do you manage that process so it doesn't cause chaos? Well, you, you first of all, just realise that the job description of a teenager is to stamp out their own individuality. They are marking out their own life as a separate adult individual. And so you've got to expect some of the challenging of the rules. You've got to expect to have... Um, uh, their boundaries tested and children, uh, parents can very much disappoint their kids if they don't stand firm. And you've got to decide which are big issues and which are small That's issues. Right. So let what them feel like they're getting some freedom. Like if they come in with all their hair shaved off or three <laughs> earrings in their ear, does it really matter? Yeah, but it probably really matters if they're out all night and you don't know where they are. Yes, some things it's not worth having World War Three over. Mm. If they leave the milk out, that's not worth having a fight. They want to get a, a death head tattooed on their forehead. That is worth having a fight over. So you've got to pick your battles because you want to stay friends with your kids right the way through. You want them to bring your grandkids around when they grow up. So you want to stay on that relationship, good relationship with them. So pick your battles carefully and be committed to seeing them through.
John and Naomi Cowan there, and they run seminars on tips on how to bring up your family. And I love that one about the midnight snack, getting the kids out of bed in the middle of the night to give them something to eat. Isn't that a real role reversal instead of the parents being dragged out of bed in the middle of the night? I like that one. Coming up shortly, we test the power of flowers and what effect they can have on someone who's ill. Who is the ill person? You'll have to wait and find out. Where do we get the flowers from? Wait and see. That's coming up next, along with the hardest worker. See you shortly.